Hello and welcome back. So before we proceed further in this course, let's have a quick overview of how an Angular application works internally and bootstraps our app. Bootstrapping is the process of initializing or loading our Angular application. So every web application needs a starting point and index.html is usually the first page in Angular app which loads in the browser. So we have already learned that when the Angular project starts, when it runs, first it loads index.html file in the browser. And the index.html file of the Angular app looks something like this. Now if you notice here, there is no JavaScript file in this index.html and neither there is any style sheet. And the body of this index.html file has this app root tag. Now what is this app root tag? And how does Angular knows what it has to load in place of this app root? Let's try to understand that. Now in order to run our Angular application, we use an Angular CLI command ng-serve. This ng-serve builds our application but does not save this compiled application to the disk. It saves the compiled application in the memory and starts the development server. ng-serve also watches over the project. If we make any changes to the application, it will recompile and update the file. To view the compiled application, we need to build our Angular project. So let's see that in practice. So currently if I go ahead and if I open the index.html file, there you will not see any JavaScript or CSS file. In the body section, you will only see this app root tag, but you will not see any reference to any JavaScript file or CSS file. So if I go to command prompt, here, let me stop this Angular CLI process. For that, I can press Control C. And let's clear the console here. All right, so when we type ng serve command, what it does is it compiles our application, it generates some bundle, and it injects it into the index.html file. But when it injects those bundles in the index.html file, we cannot see those injected bundles in our Angular project. In order to see that, we need to build our project. So instead of using ng serve, we can say ng build. And when we run this command, it is going to build our Angular project. So let me run this command. So it has started building our Angular project. And now building of Angular project is complete. So now if we go back to VS Code, there you will see a new folder called dist. If I expand this dist, there you can see this index.html. If I open this index.html, there you will see those script files injected. So in here we have five script files. Let me move them into separate lines so that it will be readable. So now you can see those script files injected here. Okay, so this runtime.js, it is basically the webpack runtime file. Then this polyfills.js, it is the polyfill script for supporting the variety of the latest modern browsers. Basically, not all the browsers can support the modern JavaScript. So in order to make them supported in older browsers, what we need to do is we need to polyfill them. So this polyfill.js is used for that. Then we have this main.js. So the main.js is basically the code of the application. So we have learned that we are going to write our Angular application in TypeScript. But when we will compile that TypeScript code, it will be converted into JavaScript. So this main.js, it is going to contain that JavaScript code. Then there is another JavaScript file which gets injected by the Angular CLI called as vendor.js. And vendor.js contains the scripts from the Angular core library and also the other third party libraries which we are using in our Angular application. And finally, we also have this style.css. Now here it is style.css, but this style.css, it will be first bundled into a JavaScript code and then it will be injected to index.html file. Okay, so if I go to the web page and if I view the page source here, you see we have this runtime.js, polyfills.js, we have styles.js. So the CSS file, it will be bundled and it will be converted into JavaScript and then it will be injected. So I hope this part is clear. Now, in case of Angular, the Angular CLI uses Webpack as a module bundler. So basically, Webpack is a bundler 
which scans our application looking for JavaScript files and merges them into one JavaScript file. Webpack has the ability to bundle any kind of files like it can bundle JavaScript file, CSS files, images, HTML, etc. And the Angular CLI uses this Webpack as the module bundler. Now Webpack needs a lot of configuration options to work correctly. And the Angular CLI sets up all these configuration options behind the scene. So we don't need to worry about that. So basically, in Angular application, the Webpack traverses through our application looking for JavaScript and other files, and then it merges them all into one or more bundles. In our example application, it has created five bundle files. And once the Angular CLI has these bundled files, what it does is it injects the bundled JavaScript and CSS files in the index.html. And we have just seen that. So by the time the index.html file has been loaded in the browser, by that time, the Angular core libraries and also the third party libraries are already loaded because they have been bundled and they have been injected in the index.html file. So they have also already been loaded in the browser. Now the Angular needs to locate the entry point of our Angular application. So in many programming languages, we have this concept of entry point where the main method will be the main entry point of any application. We have the same concept here in Angular. Now from where the Angular will come to know what is the entry point for that Angular application. For that, it searches the angular.json file. And in angular.json file, we will have this option set called main and that main will be assigned with the file path of the TypeScript file, which is the main entry point in our Angular application. So from here, from the angular.json file, Angular will come to know which TypeScript file is the main entry point for our Angular application. Here in VS Code, if I go to this angular.json file, you can see here we have this main and to this we have specified the path of main.ts file. So this main.ts file is the main file of our Angular application. Whenever the Angular application loads, the first file which will get executed is this main.ts file. So from here, now the Angular will go to main.ts file. And this is how the main.ts files code will look like. Let me actually show you the actual code of this main.ts file. So let me close this angular.json file and index.html file here. And let's close this dist folder. Let's go to this source folder. And in the source folder, you can see here we have this main.ts file. If I open this main.ts file at this line, we are importing this platform browser dynamic from this library. Now this platform browser dynamic, it is a module responsible for loading the Angular application in the desktop's browser. So Angular application can be bootstrapped in many ways and in many platforms. For example, we can also load our Angular application in mobile devices with Ionic or native script. So if we are using native script, then we will be using platform native script dynamic instead of platform browser dynamic. Okay, but since we want to run this application in the browser, we are using platform browser dynamic. And then at this line, we are also importing this app module class from this app module. Now this app module class, it is the root module of our application. The Angular application are organized as modules. Every application built in Angular must have at least one module. And the module which gets loaded first when the application is loaded in the browser is called as root module. In our Angular application, we have only one module called this app module. So this is the root module of our application. So here, this platform browser dynamic, it is loading the root module by invoking this bootstrap module function, giving it a reference to our app module. So this line of code here, what it will do is it will load the app module. So from the main.ts file, the app module will be loaded. So in the main.ts file, we have this platform browser dynamic, which is responsible for loading the Angular application in the desktop's browser. And in this main.ds file, we are also bootstrapping this app module. So from here, Angular will now move to this app module class. And this app module class, it is available inside this app module.ts file. 
So let's go to this file and let's see what is happening there. So from the main.ts file, we need to go to this app module class. And in order to go to this app module class, we need to go to the source folder. Inside that, we have this app folder. And in there, we have this app module.ts file. Okay. And there you will see we have a class called app module. And this class is decorated with this ng module decorator. And using this ng module decorator for this app module class, we are passing a metadata object. Now, in this metadata object, we have several properties like declarations, imports, providers, bootstrap, etc. So, this declarations here, inside this declarations array, we need to specify the directives, components, pipes, which belongs to this Angular module. Then we have this imports array. In the imports array, we need to list all the external modules which is required for this Angular application. Then we have this providers array. In this providers array, we register all our services of our Angular application. And finally, we have this bootstrap array. Now, in this bootstrap array, we specify the components that the Angular should load when this app module is loaded. And the component which we specify here, that component must be a part of this module. So basically, whatever component we will specify inside this bootstrap array, that will get loaded whenever this app module loads. Currently, we are only specifying one component here, which is this app component. So now this app component will be loaded. So from this app module, now the Angular comes to know about this app component. So now the Angular will go to this app component. And this app component is present inside this app component.ts file. Again, let's go to this app component.ts file in VS Code. So let me close this app module.ts file. And here we have our app component.ts file. And in there you will see that we have a class called app component. And it is also decorated with a decorator called at component. And to that decorator, we are passing a metadata object. Now in this metadata, we have three properties, selector, template URL, and style URLs. And the most important property here is this selector property. And this selector, it is assigned with this app root. So Keep in mind that a selector property can be used like an HTML element. You can also use it like an HTML attribute or an HTML class, but mostly we use it as an HTML element. Okay, so whatever value we have specified here, that can be used like an HTML element. And wherever we will use this selector value like an HTML element, like an HTML tag, there we might want to render some HTML. So remember that every component will have a view template. So wherever we will use the selector of that component, in this example, wherever we will use this app root as an HTML element, there the view template associated with this app component will be rendered. Now, what is the view template associated with this app component? We can specify the view template for a component using the template URL or simply a template property. So we can also specify a template property. Okay, and there we can specify some HTML. So we can specify the view template for a component class using either template URL or the template property. Here we are using template URL property to specify the view template for this app component. So wherever we will use this app root as an HTML element, there the HTML of the view template will be rendered. Now here we are specifying the view template as app component.html file. So for the view template, we are specifying the path of app component.html. So wherever we will use this app root selector as an HTML element, there the HTML of this file will be rendered. So if I go back to the slides, for each component, we will have a selector and we will have a view template. And wherever we are going to use that selector, the content of the view template will be rendered there. So from here, Angular will come to know about the view template, which it has to render in place of app root. So it will go to that view template. In this case, the view template is app component.html. So wherever we are using the app root selector, there the HTML content of the view template will be rendered. So now the Angular knows what to render in place of app root in index.html file. And once it knows what to render in place of app root, the index.html file will be rendered in the browser and it will display the UI. 
So this is how the bootstrapping of Angular application happens. This is how the Angular application executes and loads the UI. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.